Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
Please be seated. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to <clears throat> Dalhousie's Spring Convocation for the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. My name is Frank Harvey. It is my distinct uh, honor and privilege to be serving as Dalhousie's Provost and Vice President Academic, and I will be your MC for today. And we are absolutely thrilled to have you and everyone in person to celebrate this special occasion. I would now like to ask Elder Catherine Martin, our Director of Indigenous Community Engagement, to deliver the traditional Mi'kmaq welcome. Quay. Huh? Very good. Medoa <laughs> Lukdiuk. <laughs> Thank you for coming to this beautiful land to honor such beautiful graduates today um, and bringing the sunshine. Many of you were walk, driving in the rain. I'd like to welcome all of you to the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq, of the Onu of this land. Here, we're in Chibuktuk, 
one of the districts within the seven hunting districts across the, from Newfoundland to New Brunswick, PEI, Nova Scotia, um, and parts of Quebec are our seven hunting districts. Um, and we're, we've been welcoming people for almost 14,000 years to share in our land, and we continue to do that thanks to our ancestors, our leadership in the 1700s, who ensured that we as Mi'kmaq would be able to continue to live on our land in the way that we always had for thousands of years when they um, thought about us seven generations ahead and signed the Peace and Friendship Treaty. So for me, it's a great honor to be able to recite that to you, that we have a peace and friendship. I won't recite the whole treaty. <laughs> you can find that in the archives. <laughs> At this time in, in our history, it's a very difficult time. Um, some of you are probably quite impacted uh, by the recent events, the loss of children, especially the ones in Texas and the families who are not celebrating today and are thinking about the loss of their children. So I ask that we all take a moment and remember them and send them good, good thoughts and uh, maybe it will give them a little joy for a moment. Walaluk and Sit Nogama, and congratulations. Thank you very much, Kathy, for that beautiful welcome. I would also like to begin by acknowledging that Dalhousie University and our community benefit from and sit on Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We are very grateful at Dalhousie for our partnerships and our friendships across Dalhousie's campuses, our faculties, and our administrative units. We are grateful for our community leaders, our elders in residence, our Indigenous Advisory Council, our Director of Indigenous Community Engagement, Kathy Martin, Indigenous Student Center, Indigenous Research Facilitator in the Vice President Research Office, Indigenous Health Programs, Inclusive Pathways to the Medical and Health Professions, and many other critically important initiatives and partnerships and programs and courses across our faculties, including uh, the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and the delivery of our Indigenous Studies program delivered by uh, members of the Platform Party. We will continue to work, uh, work on and build on these critically important relationships and friendships because we are all treaty people and we take these words and our commitment to truth and reconciliation very seriously. We would also like to acknowledge the histories, the commitments, the contributions, and the legacies of the African Nova Scotian people and communities who have been here for over 400 years. We are grateful for our African Nova Scotian Advisory Council and our Director of African Nova Scotian Community Engagement. There are two times on a university campus uh, that are particularly significant. The first is when we welcome our new students to campus. Uh, and the second, of course, is at the end of their program when we come together as we are today to celebrate uh, the completion of their programs. And for many, uh, this day comes with a range of different emotions. Sadness at leaving Dalhousie and uh, your Dal community and your friends. Perhaps eagerness to move on from Dal and Nova Scotia. Possibly a little fear and anxiety about your futures, and certainly gratitude uh, for those who supported you along the way. But among the different emotions you and your classmates are working through right now, I hope you feel pride. Uh, you've accomplished what many can only dream of, and you should be proud of your many significant and noteworthy achievements. Completing your degree, particularly in these unique and challenging circumstances of a global pandemic certainly gives us all many reasons to be incredibly proud of you and your accomplishments. Convocation marks the culmination of years of very, very hard work. You spent hundreds of hours in classes, lectures, tutorials, and study groups. You've read thousands of pages from books, uh, scripts, scores, articles, research reports. 
You've written hundreds of pages of notes extracted from those books and those reports. You've completed hundreds of quizzes, midterms, and final exams. You've drafted hundreds of pages of essays and reports and other projects. You've practiced and delivered dozens of presentations, many for online audiences. Some of you participated in the production of theater and music performances, performances both on stage and online. You've explored new cultures and had many conversations with peers and professors in second and, and occasionally third languages. You've built community through student societies, conferences, and campus life. And you've engaged with local groups and organizations and earned valuable work experience through experiential learning opportunities. And you've made lots of great friends. But you've also spent a good part of the last several years balancing school and work and social lives. You've been dealing with fears and anxieties about your programs and your future. You've been taking chances and risks on program choices and professors and courses. You've been dealing with relationships and social pressures, maybe just a little bit of pressure from your parents and family. You've been managing your budget, in many cases juggling one, perhaps even two or three jobs to cover tuition. And I'm sure you've dealt with personal and emotional crises and losses, perhaps losses associated with the pandemic. Your graduation today speaks volumes about your capacity and your willingness to succeed anywhere by applying the life lessons, the skills, the knowledge, the passions, and the life choices that you've been collecting and living through over the last several years. Again, convocation marks the end of years of very, very hard work. Don't let anyone tell you after graduation that it's time to, quote, get in the game. You've been in the game for several years, including through, as I said, two years of a pandemic. These are the reasons uh, that we're here celebrating today. These are the reasons your family and your friends and the entire Dalhousie community are so incredibly proud of you. So make some noise and congratulations. <laughs> Family and friends, although we would typically encourage you to move around the auditorium and take as many pictures as you'd like, uh, for health and safety reasons, uh, we will ask that you please stay in your seats, stand up to take pictures, don't move around the auditorium. We have photographers from Life Touch who will take additional close-up photos and we'll be sharing those. And please share your best photos uh, and pictures online using uh, hashtag DowGrad. Uh, and as always, convocation is being webcast, so you could uh, watch and share uh, the video through our Dow website. I'd like to take uh, a few minutes to introduce those individuals uh, who will be participating in our ceremony today. Uh, and you'll note from my notes that a few final edits were included. So let me see if I can get through these and read my handwriting, uh, starting with Scott Bryson, our chancellor. <laughs> Dr. Deep Saini our President and Vice-Chancellor. Dr. Fred Fountain, former Chancellor and Honorary Degree recipient. Dr. Louise Spiteri, uh, Interim Chair of Senate. Dr. Yuri Ganter, Acting Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Dr. Marty Leonard, Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies. Catherine Martin, who delivered the traditional Mi'kmaq welcome a few moments ago. Elder Ann Libidowa from Eel River Bar, New Brunswick, who will be, and will be presenting medicine pouches to our indigenous graduates today. Uh, Dr. Angela Siegel, Associate Vice President uh, Academic. And, of course, Elizabeth Fountain, our honorary degree recipient today.
Also on the platform party today and in the audience are many other faculty, staff, and administrators, including your uh, associate deans, your VPs, and many other, who, uh, many other members who are so critical to the success of our students and to the academic excellence of our uh, programs. And I'd like you all to stand as well. Thanks. And finally, I would like to acknowledge uh, one of our ushers. Uh, first of all, we should acknowledge all of our ushers who've been uh, steering our students into their seats, but one usher I'd like to acknowledge is Dr. David Mathias. Uh, Dr. Mathias is the Assistant Dean Student Matters in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. He has been a Dow for 33 years and has attended and ushered 27 ceremonies over that time, and he will be retiring soon, so thank you, David. Thank you all, please be seated, thank you. I would now like to invite Dr. Deep Saini to deliver the President's remarks. Thank you, Dr. Harvey. Graduates, families and friends, and distinguished guests, a very warm welcome to all of you to this convocation. What a pleasure it is and what an honor it is to finally have the opportunity to join all of you in person for this convocation. After two very difficult years that kept us physically apart, it is a very welcome return to this important rite of passage. Today's ceremony blends long traditions with appropriate adjustments, of course, for the times we are living through and a nod to the place where Dalhousie is anchored, this beautiful part of Mi'kma'ki that we call Nova Scotia. This ceremony is a celebration of your transition from students to graduates and alumni. But far more importantly, it is a celebration of your achievements and what you have gone through. This milestone is a very well-earned personal recognition of your efforts and abilities and a source of great pride, of course, for you, but also for your supporters, many of them here and many not here. Class of 2022, you know it only too well that it would be an understatement to say that the last couple of years did not quite play out the way any of us would have imagined. But regardless of the incessant challenges that the circumstances threw at you since the beginning of 2020, here you are. Despite what you, you were given, look what you've done with it. You met your goal, and you're here, receiving this testament to your perseverance, resilience, grit, and determination. So ladies and gentlemen, I think this calls for all of us to put our hands together and give a big round of applause to these amazing graduates. Thank you. I know this wasn't the student experience you had imagined, but you overcame great obstacles to make it to this day. You traveled, some of you very far, along the way navigating evolving restrictions here in Canada and abroad. You adapted and collaborated and made the most of online learning, gaining new skills and insights, and in the process, helping create and then refine 
a whole new paradigm for how the university education will be delivered and received. Many of the lessons that we learned through these shared experiences of ours will endure, offering new and better learning tools to the future generations. Someday, you will look back and proudly recall that this is where it all began and you had a central role in all of it. You haven't had it easy, but I dare to imagine that someday you will also look back and realize, and that is if you don't already do so, that this experience has made you stronger, perhaps it has made you more resilient, more creative, more innovative, more, emp em more empathetic, more civic-minded, more conscious of how the actions of one impact many, and more committed to striving for a better tomorrow. And these are exactly the traits that our world needs today. Over the past two years, the phrase, the new normal, has become an increasingly familiar part of our lexicon. However, if we stop and think, we realize that for the society to enter a new normal is nothing really unique in itself. After all, human history is replete with many turning points of similar magnitude. So what is unique about this experience that we've gone through? Well, the uniqueness of this particular new normal resides in the confluence of the daunting and often wicked challenges that it coincides with. You know what they are. Let me give just a few examples to remind us all. Climate change and its looming impacts. That's all here now. The recognition on an unprecedented scale that historical wrongs must be righted. New global public health challenges. The need to feed a projected population of nine billion on the globe without destroying the planet. The challenges faced by democracy, peace, and global order that we're living through right now. And the senseless violence that continues in our communities that Kathy Martin spoke about so emotionally. The solutions to many of these challenges, examples, climate change, the health challenges, public health challenges, the challenges facing our agriculture, the need to feed the ever-increasing population, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they, of course, will involve new scientific and technological advancement, advances. However, none of that would amount to very much if we don't match it with the similar progress and innovation on the fronts of humanities and social sciences. So, in fact, I would actually submit that the solutions to many of our problems that we face today, the technological solutions, could be pulled off the shelf right now, today. The impediments are in the domains of humanities and social sciences, not your disciplines, but how human beings and our societies act to adopt new uh, technologies and new innovative ways of solving our problems. So your role in solving these wicked and daunting problems that I spoke about is very, very central. Now, I, I am certain that many of you are thinking, perhaps all of you are thinking, what is this strange fellow doing standing up here on the stage talking about all these depressing things on a day that is marked for celebration? Well, I have a point, and I'm getting to it very quickly before, uh, before I'm thrown off the stage. I know the task in front of you will not be easy. It will indeed demand a great deal of you. But, and here's my point, your generation has demonstrated again and again that you have what it takes to overcome extreme circumstances. When I see what you have overcome over the past two years, and especially how you have overcome it and what you have accomplished, and most importantly, what you have become as a result, I feel entirely confident that the world is in very, very competent hands. So let's get to the celebration. Today is a big day really big day, 
as you cross the stage today and become a member of the worldwide community of graduates, you also join the Dalhousie alumni family, which is a distinguished group that has in fact already left an indelible mark on societies around the world. I have no doubt that you, you will uphold this tradition and the years to come will see you too achieving great things both for yourselves but even more importantly for the world. While you do so, I hope you will retain fond memories of your time here at Dalhousie and your roots at your alma mater. You, our graduates, are the greatest source of joy and pride for all of us at Dalhousie. So on behalf of Dalhousie University, please accept my heartfelt congratulations and very best wishes for the brilliant future you all so richly deserve. Thank you, congratulations again, and please stay in touch. Thank you, President Saini. Will graduates please rise? Mr. Chancellor, as Chair of the Senate of Dalhousie University, I ask you to confer degrees on those candidates whose names have been approved by Senate. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, I admit to the respective degrees and diplomas with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining they are to those candidates who have fulfilled the requirements of that degree and whose names have been approved by the Senate. Admitto vos ad gratum. Congratulations. Graduates, please be seated. I'd now like to call upon Dr. Yuri Gantor, Acting Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, Dr. Marty Leonard, Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies, and Ivy Abbott Charles, a Fountain School of Performing Arts alumni who uh, will be um, presenting the candidates who are here to receive degrees. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor. As Acting Dean, I'm pleased to be here today to celebrate the accomplishments of candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for diplomas and degrees within the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Diploma in Costume Studies. Daphne St. Jacques. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Bachelor of Arts. Ahmed Abdirazak Abakar, Sociology and Social Anthropology. Alex Afonso, with honors in both English and creative writing, first class honors. Jasmine Page Beatrice Andrich, double major in Religious Studies and English. <laughs> Mina Arem, major in Political Science. <laughs> Ali
Adnan Asan with honors in philosophy. Manisha Sonal Bakshi, major in theater. Avery Helen Bottoms Bain, major in law, justice, and society. Dianabu Pauline Berry, double major in law, justice, and society, and sociology and social anthropology. Shannon Catherine Berry, major in international development studies. Taylor Marie Beam, major in English. Samuel John Beaton, major in law, justice, and society. Claire Elizabeth Beliveau, with honors in both political science and law, justice, and society. First class honors. <laughs> Annette Berry, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Derek Andrew John Birkbeck, with honors in theater. First class honors. Olivier Henry Blay, with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Ronald Douglas Blanchard, with honors in both history and international development studies, first class honors. Brianna Ashley Boland, major in Law, Justice, and Society. <laughs> Ashley Kathleen Bradford, double major in English and Cinema and Media Studies, distinction. Bria Tene Brown, double major in Law, Justice and Society and International Development Studies. <laughs> Scott Alexander Burns, major in History. <laughs> Keenan Reed Bigden with honors in both English and creative writing, first class honors. <laughs> Renxiang Kai, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Marin Rose Carey, with honors in both environment, sustainability and society, and sociology. First class honors. <laughs> Ryan John Caruthers, major in sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Ella Cathcart, major in history with distinction. Amber Elizabeth Jesse Chin, double major in philosophy and gender and women's studies. <laughs> Lise Michelle Charles, with honors in both international development studies and environment, sustainability, and society. First class honors. David Alejandro Chaco Monco, 
with honors in both cinema and media studies and social anthropology. <laughs> Vanessa Fong Chow, major in law, justice, and society. Colin Michael Cooper, major in political science. Cormier Lebrun, major in International Development Studies. <laughs> Meg Coyle, double major in Law, Justice and Society and Environment, Sustainability and Society. <laughs> Alexandria Julishka Donks, major in Law, Justice and Society. Robin Irie Audrey Dan, double major in political science and law, justice and society. <laughs> Renee Doreen Davis, major in law, justice and society. Olivia Hannah Delio, major in English. Nathan Doris, with honors in sociology. Hannah Duma, double major in political science and gender and women's studies. Ty Gus Driesen Vanderleck, double major in sociology and social anthropology and law, justice, and society. <laughs> Robbie Dewersch, double major in sociology and social anthropology and classics with distinction. Joanna Maria El Amar, major in classics. <laughs> Michelle Enderline, double major in political science and creative writing. Grace Madison Erickson Miro, double major in sociology and social anthropology and international development studies. <laughs> Stephanie Suan Fernandez, Bachelor of Arts. Benjamin Harrison Fillier with honors in political science. <laughs> J. Christopher Frizzell, double major in English and creative writing. <laughs> J. 
Anna Christina Gaudet with honors in both environment, sustainability, and society and history. First class honors. Jude Gazelle, major in law, justice, and society with distinction. <laughs> Wesley Andrew Giffen, with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Jack Harry Douglas Gillett, Major in Political Science. Claire Elizabeth Gillis, Major in Sociology and Social Anthropology. Ashley Rose Jewell Goodwin, with Honors in Theater, First Class Honors. Liam Wesley Gold, Bachelor of Arts. Erin Ann Grant, double major in English and Cinema and Media Studies. Megan Marie Gray, with honors in history. Samuel David Grushi, major in history. <laughs> Shams Hamad, with honors in both international development studies and political science. <laughs> Cass Nicole Hannay, double major in international development studies and Canadian studies. Cora Hart, major in Law, Justice, and Society. <laughs> Sonia Akese Hassan, major in International Development Studies. Jan Hayhurst, major in International Development Studies. <laughs> Junyi He, double major in Political Science and Economics. Morgan Lindsay Nell Harrington, major in political science. <laughs> Sean Nicholas Hooper, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Victoria Alexandra Hudson, with honors in law, justice, and society, first class honors. Caitlin Isles, major in Law, Justice, and Society. <laughs> Megan James, major in English. <laughs> Alexandra Mary Johnson, major in Theater with Distinction. Liam Daniel Kennedy Finnerty, with honors in English, first class honors. Evan Andrew Keo, 
with honors in political science. <laughs> Emma Caitlin Kerr with honors in international development studies. <laughs> Zishan Ali Khan, Bachelor of Arts. Matthew Kohler, major in Law, Justice, and Society. <laughs> Emma Jane Kulmatiki, double major in Environment, Sustainability, and Society, and International Development Studies. Nicholas Joseph Kurlansky, major in political science. Marianne Elise Labrie, with honors in theater, first class honors. Joseph William Leahy, with honors in sociology, first class honors. <laughs> Kaylin Lanigan, major in sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Amanda Kathleen Laprise, major in political science. Jenna Mary Ann Layton, Distinction Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Olivia Katerina Lepp, Major in Law, Justice, and Society with Distinction. Demeter Victoria Merle Lockyer, with honors in both International Development Studies and Sociology. First class honors. <laughs> Moira Kathleen McDonald, major in Sociology and Social Anthropology. Rafaela Marie Magbu, major in political science and law, justice, and society. <laughs> Catherine Ann Mansvelt, major in law, justice, and society. <laughs> Sage Marshall, Bachelor of Arts. Augustine Rose Simmons Matheson, major in political science. <laughs> Creston Redmond Matthew, major in political science. Riley Morgan Vino McGill, with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Isabel McIntyre, major in law, justice, and society, with distinction. <laughs> Bridget Ann McSwiggan, major in sociology and social anthropology. Claire Elizabeth Mercer, with honors in both history and political science, first class honors. Yeah. 
Shayna Lynn Mills, major in sociology and social anthropology. Young Shi Lin, major in law, justice, and society and economics. <laughs> Faria Mohammed Mohammed, major in international development studies. Heather Catherine Moore, double major in Environment, Sustainability, and Society, and International Development Studies. <laughs> Sophie Eileen Morito, major in Law, Justice, and Society with Distinction. Madison J.C. Murray, major in French. <laughs> Sid Jade Nesbitt, with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Sam Nika, major in law, justice, and society. Alinju Nge, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Wyatt Mitchell Noel, double major in Environment, Sustainability and Society and International Development Studies. Haruz and Sonia, major in International Development Studies. <laughs> Zachary O'Keefe, major in Law, Justice, and Society with Distinction. Elizabeth Grace Ogden, with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Isabella Paez de Melo de Camargo, double major in international development studies and gender and women's studies. Santiago Ortegon Gonzalez, major in sociology and social anthropology. Nicola? Nicola Edward Paquette, double major in English and creative writing. Paul Thomas Pike with honors in sociology. <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Pope, major in history. <laughs> Grayson Allen Porter, double major in political science and history. Kate Avery Porter, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Kiara Louise Power, with honors in both theater and history, first class honors. <laughs> Emily Quinn, with honors in both political science and history, first class honors. Marcus Alexander Rao, 
with honors in sociology. Vincent S. Rodding, double major in political science and sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Kayla Rakowski, with honors in both environment, sustainability and society and environmental science. First class honors. Alec Conrad Ramboski, with honors in both history and political science. <laughs> Maria Alejandra Rinken, double major in cinema and media studies and creative writing, with distinction. Jarrett Ross, major in English. Abba Dudua Sa, double major in International Development Studies and Political Science with distinction. Alice Sharples, with honors in both English and psychology, first class honors. <laughs> Detchen Sherpa, Bachelor of Arts. Stephanie Margaret Simons, with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Chloe Morgan Spence, major in French. <laughs> Cole Evans Starr, major in law, justice, and society. Lizzie Sterling, combined honors in contemporary studies and biology. Sarah Jo Stewart, with honors in both international development studies and history, first class honors. Stacy Lee Tabor, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Rebecca Lynn Taylor, Major in Law, Justice, and Society. Adriano Donald Chiro Tesselin, major in political science. Andy Elizabeth Tidman, double major in cinema and media studies and creative writing. Ambrose Lehman Tierney, with honors in political science, first class honors. <laughs> Sandy Todras, major in law, justice, and society. <laughs> Delia McGuire Topitzer. Double major in philosophy and English. <laughs> Nicole Ruby Toth, double major in law, justice and society and philosophy. <laughs> oh. 
Jameson Robert Quigley Urquhart with honours in both history and environment, sustainability and society. First class honours. <laughs> Stacy Elizabeth Weber with honours in political science. Colin Gabriel Wenzel with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Hallie Alexandra White, major in international development studies. John Ritter Whitmer, major in philosophy. <laughs> Kaya Emily Williams, with honors in both environment, sustainability and society and Spanish, first class honors. <laughs> Isabel Ann Wong, major in history. Ireland Regan Wright with honors in history, first class honors. <laughs> Jing Wu, major in theater. <laughs> Catherine Wurstiuk, double major in international development studies and gender and women's studies. Emma Ann Martha Yazbek, double major in political science and psychology. <laughs> Taylor Nicole Ewell, major in political science with distinction. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Bachelor of Music. Harrison Faulkner Brooks, with distinction. Charlotte McCallum Forknell. Caitlin Amanda Graham, with distinction. <laughs> Curtis Stefan George Wagner. <laughs> India Rose Beauchamp jo Jackson, with distinction. Chloe Matamoros. James Hector Whitley. Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the bachelor's degree. Mr. Chancellor, as Dean, I am pleased to be here today to celebrate the accomplishments of candidates who will fulfill the requirements for degrees within the Faculty of Graduate Studies.
Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Arts. Kristen Joy Becker, History. <laughs> Francesca Lucia Bray, Political Science. <laughs> Anne Lydia de Saint Croix, International Development Studies. Julia Jordan, Musicology. <laughs> Brianna Alexis Kelly, Social Anthropology. <laughs> Catherine Marie Merritt, Sociology. Mary Jo Mochler, French. Claire Lynette Saremba, International Development Studies. Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of those candidates who are here today to receive the master's degree. Mr. Chancellor, the degree of Doctor of Philosophy is the highest earned degree awarded by the university, and as such, it represents the culmination of the candidate's educational achievement. The following candidate who, through thesis and examination, has fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Mr. Chancellor, furthermore, the awarding of the PhD degree completes a long cooperation between the student and their thesis advisor, and we are pleased in this ceremony to also recognize the supervisor of the doctoral candidate, and we ask the supervisor to stand and remain standing as the graduate crosses the stage. And following the awarding of the degree, we would like to invite you both to join us on the stage. Kathy Lee Fournier, Doctor of Philosophy in Interdisciplinary Studies. Christina McLeod, Doctor of Philosophy in Social Anthropology. Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the degree of Doctor of Philosophy.
please join me once again in congratulating all of our graduates today. And just a very quick round of applause for our excellent order today, Ivy Abbott Charles. Thank you. I would now like to call attention to the families and friends of our graduates. We know that convocation is an important occasion for you as well, and I'm sure all of us here recognize the importance that your love and support uh, has played along uh, the way. So we would like to express our gratitude to you for your role. Um, so I would ask all the graduates to please stand up. And if I can ask the onstage party as well to stand up. Graduates, your family and friends have been applauding you throughout our convocation, throughout the ceremony today. Now it's your turn and our turn to make some noise in honor of them for their support. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. Conferring an honorary doctorate degree is the highest honor a university bestows. I now call upon Dr. Louise Pteri, Chair of the Senate, to present the candidate for the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Elizabeth Fountain's philanthropic leadership extends across Nova Scotia and Canada. Born in the Spryfield neighborhood of Halifax, Mrs. Fountain's generosity and dedication to the arts, education, culture, environment, and health, particularly mental health, have benefited countless individuals and organizations. In her nomination letter, Dr. Roberta Barker, a theater professor in Dallas Performing Arts School, which bears the Fountain family name, writes that Mrs. Fountain's quiet leadership has revealed her to be a champion of her community who has set an example of advocacy and support for future generations. Nowhere is Elizabeth Fountain's generosity more evident to us here at Dalhousie than in the Fountain School of Performing Arts. Thanks to the transformative gift provided by Elizabeth and Fred Fountain, Dalhousie's theater and music departments have come together to establish Canada's largest performing arts school east of Montreal. Not only does this generous funding bring in world-class artists and arts leaders, but it also makes arts education accessible by enabling scholarships to 60% of students. And Mrs. Fountain doesn't stop there. She rarely misses a performance, and students eagerly look for her face in the audience. She also served as honorary co-chair for the recently completed Dalhousie Arts Centre expansion campaign. Mental health is another personal passion for Mrs. Fountain. After losing the son Alex to suicide in 2009, the Fountains found the strength to share their personal heartbreak with others and work toward preventing similar tragedies for other families. In partnership with the QE2 Health Sciences Centre Foundation, they founded the Stay Connected Mental Health Project in Alex's honor. Stay Connected works to improve collaboration among mental health service providers and includes university-specific initiatives like student peer support 
and help for faculty and staff to identify students in distress. Alex was a King's student, and to honour his memory and his spirit, his parents created the annual Alex Fountain Memorial Lecture, which enables the King's student body to invite a speaker of their choice to the university each year. In the words of Bill Bean, retired CEO of the QE2 Foundation, Elizabeth is a humble person, not one to take the limelight. She's gracious, kind, thoughtful, and giving. Her dignity and poise, even through the most tragic circumstances, has not wavered. Elizabeth and Fred Fountain have also provided transformative charitable support to so many local and national organizations, too many to provide a list. But some prominent examples include the Dalhousie Medical Research Foundation, Langhouse, Phoenix House, the Canadian Museum of Immigration at Pier 21, the Black Loyalist Heritage Centre, the Nature Conservancy of Canada, Symphony Nova Scotia, the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, and the National Gallery of Canada. Mrs. Fountain holds honorary degrees from both King's and Mount St. University University, her alma mater, and has been recognized twice by the Nova Scotia House of Assembly for generous contributions to arts and culture. In recognition of both her personal and philanthropic generosity and her vast contributions to the quality of life of all Nova Scotians, I ask you, Mr. Chancellor, in the name of the Senate, to bestow upon Elizabeth Fountain the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa. You can take your mask too, if you like. There we go. Well, I may not be able to get through this. With me. Elizabeth Fountain, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, I admit you to the degree of laws, honoris causa, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations, Dr. Fountain. It is my pleasure now to invite Dr. Elizabeth Fountain to deliver the convocation address. Good morning, everyone. Chancellor Bryson, President Zaney, Chancellor Emeritus Fountain, my dear Fred, platform guests and faculty, families and guests of graduates, and most especially graduates. Thank you. I am deeply touched to have been chosen by Dalhousie for this honor. 
And it's so wonderful to be back on campus for convocation in person in the Rebecca Cohen audience, audience, Auditorium at the Dahazi Arts Center. I've taken my inspiration for my address to you today from many places. From a recent letter, my dear friend Janet McMillan, who wrote in her capacity as chair of the Dahazi Medical Research Foundation, in which she spoke so eloquently, not only of the amazing and impressive health research that DMRF is supporting in such areas of mental illness, Alzheimer's, and more, but also what it means to her personally to be a volunteer and a donor. From the legacy report of our Stay Connected Mental Health Project, compiled by Dr. Pilon, now Director of Counseling and Psychological Services here at Dalhousie. That was an excellent head hunt, by the way. Uh, even from a bumper sticker from an animal rescue and adoption organization that had a picture of a dog on it and the words, who rescued who? In what I've taken to be a reference to the many people who adopted pets over the pandemic in order to help them cope with their loneliness and isolation. Finally, and most importantly, my inspiration has come from you students here at Dalhousie. You see, I've had the pleasure and indeed the privilege of reading many letters of thanks from students who've told me what it has meant to them and to their families to receive fountain scholarships and bursaries. And I'm going to tell you, those letters touch me deeply. You've told me what it has meant to be able to attend university. And for many, you've been the first one in your family to do so. You've told me how challenging it has been to take your courses online because of COVID. How your professors and teachers have been there for you and who your favorites are. <laughs> You've shared your dreams of what you want to do after you graduate. And many of you have told me how your mental health has suffered over these COVID years. I don't think many of you here would have known this before today, but we lost our son Alex to suicide nearly 13 years ago. Alex was a student at King's, almost 21, about to begin the fourth year of his arts degree with the dream of eventually becoming a teacher. He was bright, intelligent, a great student, quick-witted, funny, good-looking, which I can say, being his mother. He was musical, writing music, and playing in three or four different bands. He had a family who loved him to pieces, tons of friends and girlfriends. People loved him. And he was kind, the kindest person I've ever known. The person who wanted to bring everyone into the room and make sure that every person counted. As I've thought and said many times, he had everything to live for and nothing to die for. And yet he suffered from the seemingly sudden and inexplicable onset of depression at the beginning of his third year at King's. We knew about it. Indeed, he came to us saying he, hadn't, he just hadn't been feeling himself lately. We sought help for him, which he accepted, and he seemed to improve, particularly over the following summer. Seemed to, but not really. We left Halifax for Montreal in late August in order to take his sister Catherine to McGill. Alex took his own life while we were gone. So how do you come back from something like that happening in your life? When all you want to do is curl up in a ball and die yourself. When everything is forever changed. Well, it begins with the people with whom you surround yourself. And we were fortunate to be surrounded by wonderful friends and family and colleagues who were there for us, who stepped up for us, who just wrapped their arms around us and brought us along. And that continues to sustain, sustain us to this day. 
and we knew we wanted to do something to honor Alex's memory, something that could make a difference, but had to be in keeping with Alex's desire to bring everyone into the room. And we didn't think setting up a scholarship benefiting only a few would have been what he would have wanted. So with the help of Bill Bean, who's here today, then President and CEO of the QE2 Foundation, and the aforementioned Dr. David Pilon, now DAL's Director of Counseling and Psychological Services, we were able to set up the Stay Connected Mental Health Project, which among other initiatives has university-specific initiatives, including student peer support and support to faculty and staff to help identify and assist students experiencing severe distress and or mental health problems across the five Halifax universities, including Dalhousie. And that has brought us great comfort knowing that students could access peer support on campus in a safe place where they could talk about anything that could be impacting their mental health, from academic workload, stress and time management, to sexual orientation and gender identity, to living situations and relationships, and so much more. Around the same time as we were beginning to work with Dr. Pilon on envisioning the shape the Stay Connected Mental Health Project would take, Dahazi approached us with an idea. Would we be interested in making a major donation to Dow's Inspiring Minds Capital Campaign in the areas of music and theater? The donation would bring the music and theater programs together to create a performing arts school and provide much needed funding for scholarships, equipment, and programming. We long had, had had an interest, maybe a little more toward the music and visual arts side of things, having been longtime supporters of Symphony Nova Scotia, Scotia Festival of Music, and our provincial and national art galleries. So we thought about it for a minute and said, yes, of course we should do this. We really needed to do this. And so we did. And so began the Fountain School of Performing Arts. And what an amazing and rewarding experience it has been for us. We've tried to attend as many of the performances as we possibly could. We were able to meet many of you though not so much in person as prior to these COVID years. We've also been in pretty much every nook and cranny of this Dalhousie Art Center, both prior to and during its ongoing, but very soon to be completed, renovations and expansion. So I've shared all of these things today because I want to leave you with a few thoughts and ideas I've learned about giving, the importance of art, and the importance of looking after our mental health. Firstly, the arts play a powerful part in the, in the human connection we all need. And COVID has certainly shown us how important and necessary the arts are. I recall the first small but live concerts I went to in that tiny window of time we had between COVID's first and second waves. And even though we had to stay in our own groups, it was so apparent that people were starving for live entertainment and the ability to be out among others. Similarly, at the resounding celebration of the arts held on this stage last Friday evening that brought together an amazing showcase of the young talent we have, plus the more well-known performers we all love. You could feel the energy and excitement in the audience and there was no mistaking how excited the performers were to be back doing what they love best. Secondly, when you get the chance, leave some space in your life to give back. It doesn't have to be money. It can be your time or your talent. But however you give or whatever you give to, Make sure it holds meaning to you, and you will be rewarded in ways you never imagined possible. I have found this to be true many times over, and I want to personally say that our gift to Dalhousie that created the Fountain School of Performing Arts has been what I like to call the gift that keeps giving back, 
as we have been able to witness and enjoy your accomplishments through your performances and presentations. President Sadie made the remark the other evening that people from the East Coast don't seem to celebrate or boast about their achievements and successes as much as they do in the rest of Canada. And that is probably true. So even though it is not really in my nature to do so, for you, Dr. Thaney, for everyone here today, and for our wider arts community and their audiences, I want to say that we are very proud to have our name associated with this terrific school. Finally, and most importantly, I want to say, please, please take care of your mental health. Seek help when you need it, and step up if you see that someone else does. And please don't let any thoughts of stigma prevent you from reaching out. It is well past time for stigma to be any kind of barrier to seeking help. We want and we need all of you wonderful young people in our world. Congratulations, graduates. I'm proud to be part of your class of 2022. I wish you much happiness and success and good mental health. Thank you. How would you feel about having to follow that beautiful present? <laughs> One of the joys of being the provost uh, of Dalhousie is the honor to attend all the convocations and listen to, and this year we're talking about 18 convocations, and listen to such beautiful convocation addresses. But there are a few. that grab you and force every thought to evaporate, that draw you into the story and the pain and the message. And so, Dr. Fountain, I want to thank you for that incredibly beautiful and inspirational story about how our students and our children inspire us. Thank you once again. Graduates, let me be the first to acknowledge that as you leave the auditorium today, you will officially become part of Dalhousie's alumni network of 152,000 people around the world. This is a wonderful asset, and I hope you'll take advantage of the connection to the broader Dal community. We certainly invite you to get involved. We invite you to stay involved. In recognition of your new status, members of the Alumni Association will be uh, presenting you with alumni pins as you exit the hall, and we hope that you wear them with pride and you wear them often. So congratulations again. Welcome to the Dalhousie University alumni family. Graduates and guests, the business of convocation is, in, is concluded. After the singing of O Canada, you are requested uh, to remain standing if you are able uh, as the academic procession leaves the auditorium. I now invite you to join Josh Robinson, a Dalhousie voice student in the Fountain School of Performing Arts in the singing of O Canada. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command, Cartombras 
se porte le pee, il se porte la croix. Ton histoire est épopée, tes plus brillants exploits. God, keep our land glorious and free. Stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for
Beabon Madultinech, Beabon Madultinech, dann gieß auch der Liga Halux, Sigum, Hulau, Fit, Bambu, Hey, hey. 